Hi, I'm Annie Kennedy, and I'm the Chief of Policy, Advocacy, and Patient Engagement with the Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases. And we're an evidence-based policy organization that's comprised of a coalition of patient advocacy organizations and other stakeholders in the rare disease environment that are really focused on eliminating the diagnostic, regulatory, and access hurdles that face our rare disease community here in the U.S. So there are absolutely are misconceptions about, first of all, who the rare disease community is and how many people comprise our rare disease community, and then the costs incurred by those living with rare diseases, and then the costs of treatments for rare diseases. And so we're really been, we've really been focused on reading the course, if you will, and making sure that we have real data to inform those decisions for not just the treatment options and how we invest in developing treatment options and when those treatment options are available, but also how we invest in the diagnostic technologies available for patients. And so the first thing we did is we had a national economic burden of rare disease study that I was here to talk to you about previously that really helped us establish that we have a population of more than 30 million Americans living with rare diseases, and we knew that was an underestimate. And then in 2019, the cost of living with a rare disease was close to a trillion dollars in the U.S. for those with rare diseases. But most importantly from that data, we found that 60% of those costs were being shouldered by families. Those were not costs being shouldered by the healthcare system. Those were costs not being covered by our health insurance. It's for families who are diagnosed with a rare disease, the lion's share are coming out of pocket for families. But we also found in that study that the diagnostic odyssey for those with rare diseases is untenable and lasts more than six years and often includes providers out of state, specialists, and a long winding road that often for many looks like that if you remember that childhood game of shoots and ladders where you're sent on one path and then you're dropped into another. And we wanted to better understand what some of those costs were for families and what of those costs were avoidable so that could we make the case for deploying some of those technologies we know we have today through diagnostics, personalized medicine, genomics, and make the case for investing in shortening or eliminating that diagnostic odyssey. And so that's what brought us to this study. So what we found, we looked at seven diseases. So instead of this time looking at sort of the broad ecosystem of rare diseases, we needed to sort of look specifically at rare diseases for which we had a beginning and an end to the diagnostic odyssey so we could understand those costs. We looked at diseases that both were pediatric onset and later onset, because of course we're not looking just to make the case for pediatric rare diseases, but for those for whom their presentation is later in life as well. And we also looked at diseases for which we are already looking at shortening that diagnostic odyssey through newborn screening. So of the seven diseases, five were pediatric onset, two were later adulthood onset, and three are screened for in the newborn period. And what we found was that the costs for families are over $220,000 in medical bills, lost income on average, but can climb as high as $517,000 across the seven diseases that we studied. And this is really a best case scenario because as I said, we were looking at diseases for which we had a beginning and an end in that diagnostic odyssey and for which we have a confirmed diagnosis. In the rare disease community, most patients don't have that really finite beginning and end. And many patients are on those diagnostic odysseys much longer than six years. But it was really important to us to begin to look at what those avoidable costs could be and how, as I said in the beginning, we could begin to streamline and shift those costs to, again, ensure that we could have better outcomes for patients and reduce some of the burden of living with a rare disease overall by getting people to better, more appropriate care sooner.